Regular council meeting of May 26, 2014 to order. Mr. Lee. Council, if you join me in a moment of silent reflection. It says Tuesday instead of Tuesday on the first line. <coughs> Anything else? That's all I got. Okay. Hearing none other, uh, minutes are approved. Okay. And we get on the agenda update of the call course. Not here. I don't see Mr. Sucks. Maybe I'll talk on his behalf, which should be a scary thing for him. <laughs> the uh, in the uh, winter time, uh, the golf course often is dormant, but that doesn't mean that there's not activities going on with regard to the golf course. And um, that's usually a time for planning and um, uh, not only just what goes on physically at the golf course, but uh, special events. Um, and uh, that was in fact uh, done this past winter. Um, and on a Saturday. I can't remember if it was late March or early April. Um, Joel had a crew of uh, regular golfers there and volunteers and um, just a, a massive amount of work gets done in one day. Um, cutting down trees that are, are dead, uh, clearing out areas that need to be cleared out, re-edging. Um, and so that, that took place in um, the golf course has taken some changes under his leadership. Um, there's three different uh, types of team grounds now um, where you can experience different um, types of turf. Um, he has set up multiple courses so that you can play the traditional course, but if you want to work on um, hitting uh, draws or fades, you can do that. Um, he's set up a course where you can play various holes without having to walk the hills if you have bad knees. Um, he's set up uh, holes where the, or on every hole he's now put a, an additional cup on the hole if it's a beginner golfer. Um, I think a standard cup is four and a quarter, four and a half inches. They seem really small when you're standing over the ball. But, um, and uh, <coughs> there's eight inch holes there. So if someone's just learning the game, they can putt to the larger hole, which will um, uh, maybe avoid some of the uh, frustration and lots of missed putts. Um, it, it's a great place to <coughs> learn how to play. It's a great place to practice. 
practice, and um, <coughs> you can still buy a, a single membership or a family membership. Um, and he has it set up so that they, if there's no one there, you slide your credit card through the slot and, uh, and, uh, and head out and play. Uh, it's a great facility, and uh, just wanted him to, uh, I just wanted him to come and highlight uh, what was going on there. And, Following was my feeble attempt to do so instead, but if it becomes, um, uh, we'll uh, give you time to, to clear up anything. I guess. <clears throat> there is an event uh, Memorial Day weekend. If you're a golfer, you just started to love it. It was yesterday. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> there was, uh, All right, the, and there'll be other events through the year. So if you're a golfer, go <laughs> one up and see them and, uh, and, and play. It's, like I said, it's a treasure and it's a, a great place. Well, that mistake is a uh, segue into what I want to say right now. Uh, there was something that he emailed to us and that the Green Hills Summer Junior Golf League starts on Friday, June 6th. Boys and girls ages from 9 to 17 play on Fridays at 9 a.m. with the league and can stay and play all day for one green fee. League days run from June 6th through June, August 1st. And also to give him a call if you want to register at 589-3585. Great. Uh, now is the time for residents to address council. This is the time for citizens to comment on matters before council or to ask questions of concern to them. When recognized, please come forward to the lectern, give your name and address, and state your comments or questions. Council meetings are tape recorded for ease of transcriptions. Comments are limited to two minutes. On reports of village officials, the uh, municipal manager Yvonne Kovac. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we have so quick. <laughs> um, gosh, we have on your agenda tonight um, there's a resolution regarding the street repair and maintenance levy. Um, this again is the first step in that process where we simply request that the auditor provide us um, with a specific um, their projection of what, what it would generate. And once it gets that information, you can make the decision on if you want to put that on the ballot or not. Um, again, it, currently it's a 1.5 mils, which is 15 cents for every $100 evaluation on a $100,000 value, that would be $15 a year. So if your number's worth more, be a little more than $15, or less, it would be less than $15. So. Um, for the village, it generates about $38,000 Again, that does go into our street maintenance account, which is what we use for our matching funds. Um, for example, like the Wind Road project that um, we just received word would be funded. So you were pretty excited about that. I was very excited. Because you got the full yes. amount, right? That you were looking um, for. For our request. <coughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Sure did. But it requires a match. Right. Yes. We would have to match. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely worth thinking. Um, I wanted to let you know that the 67 Drummond project. <coughs> Sale does close this Thursday, so that's moving forward. The other one had a 30 day, so we're not, not quite there yet. Um, opening day at the pool was this past weekend. Um, the first two days were okay. Yesterday was huge, um, very, very well attended. Standing room only, apparently. Um, for those who didn't have a chair, we do have more on order. Um, so, but there's still probably about three weeks before they're going to get here, so um, we will get more chairs. How, how's the situation with the uh, pump? Uh, the pump, uh, we were able to, uh, not we, Swim Safe uh, did locate a part for our large pump. Um, and that will be fixed this week and the slide should be operational. What, what we were able to do, what they were able to do is get the pump off of the slide and that was adequate to the circular <coughs> pool. Um, actually surprised everybody, it's such a small pump and was pumping a lot of water. Um, but that will be put back on the slide. The main pump will be fixed and it should all be good. good. So it's good. just one of those things you just never know when it's going to happen. But fortunately, they were able to come up with a, a solution for us to be able to open it. Especially since it turned out to be such good weather. Yeah. Um, so that went well. And let's see, what else? Do we have Pioneer Day coming up. And I'm going to put together an article for um, the journal on that. We will be having it. That's July 5th. 
the parade will be, it, it's the usual lineup. Um, it'll be the Kiwanis run first, uh, followed by the parade, followed by the festival. The festival, um, we do have Claire Gray working on that, the event coordinator, and we're trying to uh, replicate things from like the 1930s, games, things that people might have done then. Um, there's gonna be a petting zoo for sure at this point in time. Um, We are looking for, uh, as always, volunteers, sponsors. We're going to try to match up sponsors with specific booths, um, um, especially some nonprofits that might not have the money to, to pay for the booth. Um, she's doing a great job already at, at getting um, items from the silent auction, a um, real wide array of items, which is great. So um, just know that we're working on it. to keep the information flowing on that. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, trees, since we last met, um, Alan Bunker, our arborist, has been through the entire village marking trees. And if you see a red dot, that means it's going to be pruned. If you see a yellow dot or orange dot, they call them yellow if they're really orange, um, that, that, that means the tree is going to be pruned. Red dot removal, orange dot pruned. Sorry if I said that wrong. Makes more sense. Um, we're having a lot of people surprised as some of them that are being tagged for removal. The reason for that is um, <coughs> Alan's concerned about saying, well, prune it this year. Pruning costs about as much as removal. And he said, because those are the trees that I may tell you to prune it this year, but I will be telling you to take it down next year. I mean, he, he knows to look for the signs of failing health on the part of the trees. You know, he, he can see when it's happening and know what's, what's inevitable there. So um, we do have a pretty hefty list. Don't know how many of them will be able to afford. Assessment money that we'll take it as far as we can and still leave money for a fall planting, um, which we weren't able to do last fall. And so that list is going to be even bigger too than anticipated once we do more removals. So wanted to let you know where that stood. And in general, that tree assessment produces 38? About 37,000 a year. Okay. And we use about 20 on removal and about 10 on replanting, and the rest goes to. Emergencies, things like that. Yes. Wow. And it's pretty tight. I mean, it's important for residents to, to remember um, you know, some of these trees that are were planted when the village was constructed are now 75 years old and they have a lifespan too. And even though they're big, gorgeous trees, they're not all going to last forever. So, this is part of our regular maintenance. So <coughs> Trees that are the village plants and planting strip. You know, residents sh should water water that. I mean, I, I know we, we when they first come in, they have the little gator bags, gator bags on. But um, you know, it's it's up to the individuals if they enjoy the shade and, and uh, you know, the beauty of the trees and you know, step up and take care of them too. So. Well, I think what you're saying too, Jack, is that it's really our responsibility to maintain that portion of the yard from the sidewalk to the curb. We have to mow the lawn and that type of thing, so we really have to take care of the trees. That's our responsibility. We don't have to plant trees or remove them, which is awesome, but just just to take care of them, maintenance yeah. wise. I'll mention, I'm, I'm sure you will know that we're going to be using our finance director. So we are uh, have an advertisement out for applicants for that position. Uh, we are in our ta tax budget season, and we have a hearing set up for, I believe, the date is July 8th. Um, and that, so that, that process is moving forward as well. <coughs> when is it going to leave? Um, July, uh, June, I'm sorry, I think June 13th. Questions of the manager? Okay. Law director? 
report. Thank you. Just um, a couple of things. This is my usual you know, report on the status of the uh, municipal income tax reform bill. Um, actually, the, it's, in, it's into the Senate now, uh, and, and just today, uh, this afternoon, was the very first uh, hearing uh, in that committee. Uh, in that, but that, that hearing was just for the proponents to address the committee, so there hasn't been any opponent uh, hearings yet, so I'm sure those will be scheduled. So it is moving forward. Um, on a related note, but on a separate bill, um, there was a, what they call a mid-biannual review. It's a budget bill, kind of a midterm budget bill that was passed by the House that went to the Senate. And the Senate <clears throat> passed it, but after they inserted um, one little section in there that was not in the House version that has to do with the municipal income tax, uh, which if it stays, would now require municipalities that have an income tax to report to the state a breakdown of the income tax revenue that you get by resident versus non-resident, uh, which I don't, um, well, I guess we have uh, Rita, and I'm not sure what their software is like, but most municipalities that administer their own income tax have said, we don't, we don't collect that data. We don't do it like that, so we don't, it, it's just another, um, it's just another element from the state telling you how to administer your municipal income tax. What is expected is that, um, you know, the House passed it, it went to the Senate, and the Senate passed it, but they added this new section. So whenever they do that, it has to go back to the House to see if the House will agree with that new section. It's anticipated that the House will not agree with it. And then they create what's called a conference committee where they get some people from the House, some people from the Senate, they get together and they get to hash out how, uh, how the final version turns out. So, you know, we'll, we will continue to watch it. If you're in a, a I guess a better position than some just because you have an outside agency do that administration. I read something on that and the person from Rita commented that it seems very simple that you would be able to capture that data, it's, but it's not so simple. It's not simple, right, and it has to do with, I mean, is, it, is that related to the JEDs somehow? Or um, well, um, on its face, no. They would, it's completely separate from, from JEDs, but the the statute, the, um, the statute regulating JEDs is, is all, in all likelihood about to be amended too. That's in the Senate as well. Um, but you're right, and when you think about uh, businesses that do the withholding, when the employer does the withholding and then submits it, it, it's, it gets to be very complicated trying to figure out who is a resident, who's not a resident. Where yeah, I think the sticky part is if someone works for a business that's in the village and also lives within the village and the employer sends the money to Rita, then there's no way to know that right. this person lived in the village. Right. I mean, it's <clears throat> fairly apparent if I live in the village and I work downtown mm -hmm. that I, my resident tax is coming from. The, um, the other issue that I've heard with respect to this is, and, and this isn't the case for, for Green Hills, but some municipalities, they're their municipal income tax code says that if you don't have any tax liability, that you, you don't you don't have to file. There's a, but we have a mandatory filing requirement. Whether you have a tax liability or not, you have to file. Those places that don't have mandatory filing would likely have to adopt mandatory filing, or they'd have no way of figuring out the, the actual breakdown of you know citizen versus resident versus non resident. So in any event, just wanted to let you know those things are sort of um, weaving their way through the state house right now. And we'll continue to watch them. Clerk okay. uh, Council, Captain Lyons. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> All of the following <clears throat> were posted as required. The May 2014 community calendar the council public hearing notice on five thir for five thirteen one four, notice of the special council meeting on five six one four, 
resolution numbers 08 CD, 09 CD, and 03 F, and notice of the cancellation of the streets and services meeting of May 19th. And if there are any questions, that would conclude my report. Any other questions? Uh, Chief of Police, Neil Perlman. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. On the 25th of last month, the first of our four new video cameras were installed. The, uh, the difference in clarity when we reviewed the tapes was just absolutely amazing. It's the difference between night and day. Uh, our old systems operated using VHS tapes, so it may not take much to realize the difference of <laughs> digital video now. Uh, the first system is up and running. We were able to get three additional systems with a little bit uh, uh, more dated media instead of a thumb drive that we use a DVD, but it's still light years ahead of the VHS systems that we had. Uh, we were able to get that at a very, very substantially reduced rate. So we anticipate that we'll have uh, all four units up and running within the next month or two. Uh, we did, uh, as you know, on April 29th, receive our assessment report from CALEA, the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies. Uh, probably the most important note in there was that the assessors reviewed all standards and found the agency to be in compliance. It was readily apparent to the assessors that agency practices <coughs> meet the intent of the CALEA accreditation project process and that the agency uses accreditation as a means of implementing best practices. Uh, and as I've gotten to know our officers over the past year, this sentence meant a lot to me in that it says, the officers are well-trained and capable. Officers observe demonstrated professionalism in their appearance, demeanor, and performance. And I certainly found that to be the case as well. On May 7th, we had graduation from the special, or I'm sorry, the Supervisors Training and Education Program. It was in Columbus. It's sponsored by the Law Enforcement Foundation, and Roman Sergeant Tim Lukes was a graduate of that session. We had our Community Shred Day recently. Uh, that occurred on May 10th. Uh, it started at 10 a.m. We, uh, we had folks waiting on us. Um, and it was a study pace during the entire event. We had uh, a police officer there that assisted. Uh, chief Space firefighters were there, and uh, notably a deputy chief of his, that's a former mayor, that was just an Energizer Bunny. And I think he probably <laughs> carried more boxes and bags than all the rest of us put together. Uh, we did uh, uh, destroy a total of 6,279 pounds of documents on that day. And uh, just as a reminder to those who might be watching, uh, we do have our prescription pill box in the lobby, so that's an anytime uh, uh, use for those. We do get a lot of questions about that, but uh, any time of the day, particularly during the day, makes it very easy for us, and we'll assist citizens that come with that. During the month of uh, April, we uh, investigated six crimes. We had 163 other incidents. Uh, we were dispatched on 186 runs, uh, 630 uh, encounters were self-initiated by officers. We had 48 criminal arrests and 93 traffic arrests. We also had uh, something that I thought was quite amazing last month. We uh, completed our first formal composite photograph of the department since 2007. Uh, the photos were taken principally by Officer Tony Patton and Sergeant Tim Lukes. Uh, we used uh, a formal professional background that we put in. We figured out how to do that on our software that we had without having to buy something. But most notably, a uh, member of this council uh, offered a tremendous amount of professional assistance. And I think we got about, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe several hundred dollars worth of assistance all at the cost of about $30. And uh, I did ask the mayor if he would indulge me, and uh, I'm going to uh, present something. Jeff, you'll notice this nice green folder here. Uh, but this is a certificate of appreciation from the Office of the Chief of Police awarded to Jeff Haller, Council Member, Village of Green Hills. The Green Hills Police Department had not updated its departmental composite portrait in a number of years. With significant personnel changes and promotions, the need for a new photograph was long overdue. Typically, a professional produced composite photograph would have been well outside the budgetary reach of the department. However, Council Member Jeff Holder, the design professional, possesses great talent and superior graphics art skills. He generously devoted his time and expertise to the Green Hills Police Department, producing an updated, professional, and top quality composite photograph that otherwise would have been impossible for us to afford. He has given generously of his time, talent, and resources to better our department and our community. 
The men and women of the Green Hills Police Department are grateful for and appreciate, Jeff, your contributions to the department and to our community. We are honored to acknowledge your accomplishments, certify our appreciation, and wish you well in your future endeavors. that 
that's where this money comes from. Uh, that would be, that, that's a great opportunity for us to really leverage other people's, or, you know, some other dollars. Um, so we will um, be uh, looking at that. We also need to look at the tree assessment process, um, and that's an ordinance for 10 years uh, with the government. So we'll look at that uh, in the coming weeks. So those are the items that I talked to uh, with staff on May 13th. We do not have at this time a Finance and Audit Committee meeting scheduled. So that's the Finance and Audit update. Um, I uh, asked the mayor if it would be all right to make a public service announcement regarding ref refuse collection and I I'm going to take the liberty of making this a broad announcement. Um, one of the things that um, makes our community unique is, is uh, the beauty of our community, the community pride that we have, the way we take care of our places uh, of residence, whether you're an owner or whether you're a tenant. And um, uh, other people forming a council have said it's a good exercise to walk out your front door walk across the street and look back at your home and say, is this something that um, contributes to the neighborhood or takes away from the neighborhood? And um, I've been concerned about a declining uh, attention to refuse collection, and I'm gonna expand that a little bit to include um, grass cutting or noxious weeds as we call them in the, uh, in the legislation. I just want to remind residents that all premises and exterior properly, property shall be maintained free from weeds or from plant growth in excess of eight inches. We've had some already, and um, typically what happens is, is uh, we get a notice, and if it's not taken care of, uh, it's cut, and then it's put on your property tax. And um, I had pointed one out to the manager that I thought was way beyond eight inches. The manager had already seen it, and by the time the uh, council meeting was over, it was cut. Um, and he sent her a little text message saying, way to go, it looks like you're on top of this, but um, it is eight inches. And I, I would say, you know, we have some elderly folks um, that may um, not be as sharp as they were one day, and um, if they're struggling to keep up their lawns, maybe if you neighbors come together and take care of it for them, but um, we will be diligent in foreclosed properties going after banks, we'll be diligent in going after absentee landlords, we'll be diligent in enforcing this code as, as um, long as I see it, um, and if I don't see it, and, and I get there before the manager, we will we'll go after it. The other thing that's kind of sticking in the council's craw is regarding trash pickup. Correct me if I speak incorrectly on this. Let's <coughs> go back, but um, it, it's not appropriate for anybody to see trash cans laying around Friday morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning when trash pickup is on Wednesday. And let me just highlight the two things that I see most often, and then I'll talk about how uh, enforcement is done. Um, we have a regulation with regard to containers. Standard containers for waste shall be galvanized steel or other non-rusting material of substantial construction with tight fitting lids, watertight, and have a capacity of not more than 35 gallons or 75 pounds total weight. Large capacity waste wheelers may be obtained from the village at cost. Plastic bags may be used and only be set out on waste collection day, but plastic bags may not be used for outside storage. So if you are going to put out plastic bags, you put them out the night before because the raccoons from Winter Woods all know that you just did that and then your trash is everywhere. So the reason for that ordinance is so that we don't clean, have to clean up after raccoons. So if you're going to use plastic bags, they have to go out on the day of waste collection, which is Wednesday morning. The other one um, is with regard to setting out removal of containers. Containers may be set out after 3 p.m. 
p.m. the day before collection, that's Tuesday right now, they shall be placed as close to the curb as possible. After emptying, all containers shall be removed from the streets by 11 p.m. on the day of collection. All containers should be kept clean and disinfected. No garbage shall be set out for collection in open containers. Uh, those are the two that I see most often, and um, I have asked the manager to um, make sure that we are enforcing these. Um, typically, the enforcement process is as follows. Um, on the first violation at your address, um, you get a letter, and that letter uh, says on such and such a time, the following violations were found, and it's checked, and um, a copy of the uh, ordinances with regard to trash collection are attached to the letter so that you can see what it is. You don't get fined, you don't go to jail, handcuffed or fingerprinted, you just get a letter. The second offense, you get a certified letter. And um, then the third offense, you start um, having penalties, and this is a minor misdemeanor uh, for each um, violation. Um, we also give you a little outline of all the code requirements uh, in the letter. So if you get, if you write a check to for your violation, you've been warned once with a letter, the second time with a certified letter. And if you get a, a letter and go, I've done this for 30 years, I always pick up my cans, I, I don't know what happened and I left them out for four days. If you do this once every 30 years, you're gonna be in good shape. Uh, don't panic. Uh, but for people that are leaving them out habitually, we are gonna enforce this rigidly. So those are my comments on trash. Um, I did have two other items. Um, the question that I get asked uh, most recently about what's going on in the community is when will the butt shack be able to serve alcoholic beverages? <laughs> and being that it's warm out, they, I stopped on my way up here this evening to ask that um, and they do now have their liquor license, so if you would like to get a cold adult beverage at the Butt Shack, which is Green Hills newest restaurant, um, and I can enthusiastically endorse their food, um, you may also <coughs> now be able to get a cold beverage with your... How long were you down there, and did you endorse I did not. <laughs> I did not invite before, but I am considering stopping on the way home <laughs> just to make sure that their product is is of high quality. Um, and then the last thing, uh, yesterday was in fact Memorial Day, I didn't know that. And, um, and uh, I was away um, and with friends and just had a, a little bit of time to read and I was reading Tom Brokaw's book um, on the greatest generation. And it made me think, do we do enough to thank our veterans and those that have served? And if you didn't get a chance to thank somebody that served, um, there's a lot of people in our community um, that served in various ways. And it would be really good just to, uh, to thank them um, and uh, appreciate what they've done and the sacrifice that they've made so that we can live the way that we do. So those are my comments. Sorry that I was a little long-winded. Don't worry, it's time. I don't get it all. Any questions or comments? Actually, I'd like to um, bring up one comment. I appreciate and we really should be and we are enforcing the whole garbage can thing. Uh, any ideas on how to enforce the trash out the window? Uh, I don't recommend some of the methods I've tried where I've actually stopped and said, hey, why did you throw that out the window? Um, not confrontational, but uh, I, I don't know, but there's, I gotta believe it is discouraging where someone's saying, you're asking me to pull the trash can in and We've got a McDonald's bag to the left and you know a Pepsi bottle to the right. It doesn't lessen our responsibility. I just like to encourage the community um, to to abide by the zoning, but also don't be afraid to pick up some extra trash and throw it in in there. Um, I think it uh, goes a long way to making this a really beautiful place and, and letting that shine through and not getting tripped up by by what's along the streets at times. So. Mm -hmm. 
questions? Uh, Intergovernmental Affairs, Laws and Rules, Council Member Lee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm glad that we don't have to carry on with uh, vermin, pestilence, and disease. So <laughs> you, you, missed, you missed those, Mr. Trees. <laughs> uh, under Intergovernmental Affairs, Laws and Rules, uh, our, we had a committee meeting on April 28th to discuss uh, a proposed nuisance ordinance. Um, the issue was tabled to the uh, June 13th meeting where we will uh, meet with uh, NIC and look at current practices for uh, uh, code, code violation uh, inspections and, and that, that sort of thing. Um, I know council, various council members uh, attended the community meetings regarding the school facilities um, that uh, took place uh, earlier in May. Um, I believe the council person, uh, Walter, was at all three, um, so um, if there's something that came up at a particular meeting, I'm sure, sure you could uh, address concerns or questions of her. Um, and there's a, there was also a, uh, uh, a meeting held with the superintendent of schools, uh, provided a, an outlook for, for the district. Uh, there's a videotape on the district website so if you're interested in that, you can uh, you take a look at that. Other than that, Mr. Mayor, I have nothing more for this one. Okay. Good. Uh, extra questions? Hearing none, uh, Service and Streets Committee, um, anything that you want to report from Maria? No, I, um, there wasn't a meeting held this, this past week. Um, there wasn't really too much to talk about in reference to uh, Yvonne or, or Mike. Of bringing something to the table. So um, I wasn't uh, at the previous meeting on that, that uh, Monday morning at nine or something. So I, as far as I'm sure, she, she emailed us some, some information. Just, uh, I'm sure she'll update us next month. Okay. Mr. Hermans, if I might, might add, just she always reminds residents to put the green hills when they uh, renew their license to make sure that we get the the tax revenue. I think Bud Walterman should be here to say that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he approved. Bud, that's right. <laughs> Bud's that's what I do with a recording. Okay, any other questions? Uh, moving on, uh, community development, uh, Council Member Alton. Yes, um, first I do want to thank the Chief. It's amazing to me, at times I get um, up and down as far as encouragement goes, and sometimes uh, kind words couldn't be couldn't be a, come at a better time uh, in light of all the other things that seem to be flying around us at times. But I, I really appreciate it, and it's easy to do for a, a great department like yours. So, and then Yvonne had something on community development. I thought she could agree with Right. I um, forgot to mention, but I wanted to let you know that a third, um, the two sites that we already talked about at Potterville, they started construction, mm -hmm. they started digging. A, a third uh, set of plans now has been submitted for another one on Lot 6. Wow. Um, so we're very excited about that, I failed to mention. Is that, in your opinion, is that a direct result of the economy improving, or is it the CRA? CRA. No. I'm pretty sure that it would help. Yeah. And then uh, we had our design beautification meeting on uh, May 22nd. We had, had to shift it by week, I believe, and a uh, good meeting, uh, enthusiastic group that's uh, looking forward to make an impact this summer. If any uh, residents are interested in joining our design and beautification group, it meets uh, once a month, the first uh, Thursday, <coughs> typically. Uh, the next one will be on June 5th. Uh, we sent out, uh, I sent out a one call today to remind people about movie night this Friday. It's gonna be at the farmer's market at 8.30 and just doesn't roll off my tongue, but uh, the movie is Adventures in Zambezia. Uh, you don't know how many times I've ever gone through that to <laughs> say it within my allotted 45 seconds. Uh, it is a G-rated movie. Uh, please bring lawn chairs and blankets. Uh, there'll be popcorn and drinks uh, for sale. Uh, no alcoholic beverages, uh, please. And 8.30 at the farmer's market. Uh, if it does rain, it has to 
really rain, not pretend to rain. Uh, we'll look at an alternate date, I think is how we left it. Uh, but we're excited to get this rolling, and if we can grow it in size and the enthusiasm is there, we'll look at possibly putting it on the common or a larger, larger venue. Let's see what else I have. Uh, coming up will also will be Community Day at the Pool. Uh, looking for volunteers to help out with that. Uh, got a lot of positive feedback from the last time that we you know, conducted it. And uh, it's on June 14th, Saturday, June 14th, starting at noon. Uh, so if you're interested in volunteering, you know, either call the office or you can email me through the website. Great. Questions, comments? Uh, comments. Um, also, I guess just on the recreation, the moves on the market stand. There's actually going to be three other ones that are going to be happening in June, July, and August. So there's going to be one a month uh, during the summertime, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Great. Uh, traffic and safety, Council Member Brooke. Uh, yes, we had our meeting today. Um, we discussed some of the old business. Um, we discussed the noise ordinance, which we'll I'll bring up um, under uh, new business for this meeting. Uh, we also, uh, Chief Quarterman, update this on Clea, but he's done a wonderful job of updating us here as well. Um, also, uh, both the chief and um, the manager are working on the police ordinance, updating that as well. Um, as soon as that's updated, we'll give it over to the law director to get it updated in our ordinance book as well. Um, for the fire department, unfortunately, the brush truck, which was supposed to have, which was especially delivered late May, has been delayed again. Uh, Ford has not yet started production, so it is anyone's guess when it will be um, completed. Um, and also the firehouse painting project, uh, there has been a little bit of a snag at the east wall, which is the side closest to the shopping center. <coughs> There's just quite a lot. Um, needs to be media blasted, um, so it needs some major prep work before it can be painted. Um, and then also on, that's east, is that the north side? Is that where the wall, east side, it's also the east side. Um, the concrete apron has dropped two inches since the fall. So it's, um, the building is fine. It's just the concrete apron and other man-made objects are sliding by Ireland and um, it needs to be shored up. So we are gonna, uh, the manager will be looking at and the chief will be looking on how much that's going to cost and hopefully we'll be able to keep it a reasonable price which is still going to be pretty expensive um, so that's that does not need to be done before the painting it's just something that um, was brought to our attention because of if you notice it you can notice it um, and then also we also mentioned the hydrant for training um, Chief Spade and uh, Ms. Quebec are going to go out and look at locations to see if they can figure it out. Um, right now, they are going off outside of the village to do the training, but we would like the training to be within Greenhouse if we can, as long as it doesn't contribute to any more erosion of our, our um, infrastructure. So um, they're gonna look behind the white building again and also um, to see what they can figure out before we get any further to try and keep it the training in greenhouse if possible. Um, new business, uh, the police chief brought up the monthly report. Um, we discussed the cruiser updates of the five. There's two in poor condition, two in fair condition, and one in good condition. It's exciting to know that one is in good condition. So um, we have also will be directing that to the finance committee as well to make sure um, we can look to replace at least the two that are in poor condition and get some kind of schedule um, so that we have a rotation so that we don't get hit with two at a time again. Um, they are working on getting the ID card maker up and running. Um, they just have to do a couple more things so we can get our ID cards um, for council members. And then um, we just discussed some parking issues. Um, and then the fire department, the EMT students that we mentioned, um, the seven students will be done mid-June. Um, the fire department is also sponsoring the July 23rd concert on the Commons. I can't remember who the band is, but... July 13th? 
23rd. 23rd. Uh, Bullet Creek. Bullet Creek. They're new this year. Okay. So it's a five-piece band. Oh. They will have a presence at Pioneer Days, the fire department. Um, if everyone has seen them out and about, there have been some signs up for recruiting for the uh, volunteer fire department. So um, if anyone's interested, we do encourage you to call Chief Spade. Um, just in conversation, we discussed solar panels on homes and apparently, or in any building, and what kind of nature it, it involves with fire and emergency calls. and. Chief Spaeth is aware of a couple and is on top of it and as always his priority is on the training and emergency runs um, within the uh, village. Um, our next meeting will be on Tuesday, June 24th at 5.30. Um, we will continue to have our meetings held on the fourth Tuesday of the month at 5.30 prior to our council meetings. So that is it. And I did, I missed last meeting because I did have a baby last 14th, so she's precious. So. And what's her name? Michaela Brooke Hermes. So, me and my fiance. And what did she weigh? <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa over there. Um, she was six pounds, 12 ounces. How long? <laughs> 20 and a quarter inches long. Yeah. And she, she is currently over her birth weight, so I'm very excited that she's gaining weight. Congratulations. She's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? <laughs>